So I woke up this morning and had no heat in the house and noticed that the thermostat upstairs was calling for heat, but the the house was cold and it's an Ecobee thermostat, so it was complaining that 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 it had been calling for heat for the past two hours and the temperature was dropping. Um, I've had to replace the heating elements before on on this particular um, furnace, which are a pain in the butt. I can show you kind of what they look like here in a second. Uh, I've had to replace these guys before. Um, actually, you can tell on this one that one of two of those coils are, are actually burnt out. Uh, this is a spare that I keep because they're a pain to find. But anyhow, I checked to see if that could possibly be it, but I noticed that regardless of what the um, thermostat was calling for, there was no air coming out of the vents. So I would come down to the unit since the thermostat upstairs was calling for heat and there was no airflow coming out of the vents and noticed that there was a, um, a slight humming noise, uh, kind of basically like a like a motor that was an electric motor being turned that that was stuck so um, we're gonna take a look and see if we can fix it so you can kind of hear hopefully the camera picks it up but you can hear that that humming noise that that I was talking about um, we're gonna take this panel off it's a couple of 5 16 inch um, sheet metal screws so we'll take that off real quick I've just got uh, impact with a 5 16 in driver on it. Once you take those screws off, um, there should be six of them. I've already removed this to, to start trying to diagnose it, but um, once you take those screws off, you can really hear that uh, that this is humming. So a quick tell to find out if the motor is seized or if the capacitor is bad is to actually get something, you can do it by hand, but that's terrifying, so I just get one of these little uh, <laughs> like dust bunny sticks and would basically, I'm going to stick it in here inside of the motor. And, and spin it around manually to try and get it started. It, if it's able to spin and, and basically it picks up from there, it's a good indication that the capacitor, which is this guy right here, has, has gone faulty. Um, if you can't spin it, then it's a good indication that the motor itself is bad. So we're gonna try that now. And you can hear it, it's starting to spin. It's now spinning like normal, and that's a, a great indication that this capacitor uh, has gone bad. Replacing the capacitor actually isn't too difficult. It's a one 5 16 inch screw, and then underneath this cover, there will be some wires. What you need to look for when getting a replacement capacitor is the rating for it. Um, so this one is the 7.5, camera can make that out but it's a 7.5 um, ferret capacitor so I will go to the store probably Granger has one right now I checked with Lowe's and Home Depot and they didn't have one um, so just run over to my local Granger grab one of these and then uh, we'll pop that pop that one back in all right just got back from the store I got a 7 microfarad capacitor um, this is the new one. So with capacitors, you are You can touch the sides without an issue. This one is brand new out of the box So it will not have a charge on it, but a capacitor is basically a big battery. Um, it's uh, Like a quick acting battery. So it's supposed to charge very quickly and then discharge very quickly as needed uh, a quick way to make sure that our capacitor is safe to handle is get yourself an insulated screwdriver with a metal tip and then just touch the two edges. 
So this will make sure that the capacitor does not have a charge on it. Um, I'm doing it right now on this one just to show you how to do it. I will then take the, uh, the old capacitor out of the system, make sure it's discharged and change out all the wires. So let's do that right now. All right, so loosen the screw. Like I said, the, the housing is safe to touch. Um, so we can take this screw out. This green cable is just a ground, so that one is also safe to touch. And then we'll take this guy slowly out, make it a little bit easier to handle. Uh, so it's got a little, well, a lot of dirt on it, um, but a little cap on it. So this rubber cap can just be moved out of the way. I'm gonna try to figure out a way to do that with the camera. Mm, there we go. So I'm gonna get the screwdriver and just touch those two terminals. Unlikely anything will happen since this capacitor is good chance that it's dead, but it doesn't hurt to be safe. So with this capacitor for the motor, um, it doesn't matter which plug goes where. So we can unplug it and plug the new one in and then do a little test to make sure that everything's working. There we go. There's one. There's two. Old capacitor out. We'll pop the new guy in. There's one. There's two. Get the cover back on here just to make it look all pretty. Even though the cover is grimy as hell. And we can pop this guy back in here. Throw that on there. We'll get one of the screws and the impact. Make sure that the ground is secured in there. And tighten it up. So we should be all good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and turn power on. And I left the thermostat upstairs, uh, still calling for the fan to be turned on. So we'll go ahead and wait here a couple seconds, see if the fan kicks on by itself or if we get a weird humming noise, but hopefully the fan kicks on and we can button everything up. it that is replacing the fan uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is just kind of button everything back up it's just the reverse of taking it, everything apart you'll need to install some screws and put the panel back on uh, one thing that I like to do is since I know that capacitor works I went ahead and bought a spare one uh, so there's another one in this box and I'm just going to go ahead and store it right there so if this ever happens in the future hopefully it doesn't um, this is the first time that this capacitor has ever gone out in my 10 plus years of living in this house. The one on the outside unit for the AC uh, unit goes out quite frequently and I can make a short video on how to replace that one here in the summer when it inevitably blows. Um, so yeah, like I said, everything else is done and we can button it back up. So we'll go ahead and do that now. I do need to loosen these two screws so that, uh, so that this panel fits. So they don't need to be completely off, just a little loose, um, basically allowing the two panels to fit together. So we'll undo that. This guy goes in like so. We get our screws back out. Tighten these guys. Hit him with a couple Ooga Doogas. We got one. Two. Three. Four. 
and four. Uh, two of them. Two of them are missing. So yeah, that is how to replace a capacitor. The this old one can just be thrown away because it's junk, and that's it. Thank you.